So what affects your premium as an electrical contractor? Well, the answer is a lot of things. First, what's your payroll? And that does include 1099. I know a lot of people like to go, well, I pay on a 1099. They're all independent contractors. I don't have payroll. Well, it's not quite that simple. First, do you require those 1099s to have their own insurance? So are they uninsured subs, subcontractors? If so, they're gonna get picked up on audit and their insurance charged to you. So what is your true payroll? If you are using subcontractors, do you require proof of insurance? And then gross receipts. Very often in the electrical contracting trade, the thing that premium is based on is ultimately that payroll. But gross receipts are a huge factor. When we get into commercial auto, uh, how many and what kind of vehicles do you have? Unlike your personal auto insurance, driving records aren't really gonna have that much of an effect in terms of each individual's driver's motor vehicle report. That pretty much just goes to, are they eligible to be scheduled on the policy or not? So remember, when you add drivers, contact your insurance agent, but also remember that we cannot share MVR information with a business owner. That has to come directly from that driver, from whom you can require that an MVR is provided at point of hire, once a year, whatever arrangement you wanna create. And those reports are available very inexpensively online to anyone and everyone. The problem with providing that information to you as an insurance professional is that triggers several federal laws and makes us a Fair Credit Reporting Act vendor. Basically, it creates a problem with federal law. And what we can do is say, this driver qualifies, this driver does not qualify. What we cannot do is tell you, well, this driver had a DUI three years ago, this driver had a speeding ticket six months ago. Uh, because of FCR regulations, it's just not possible, no matter how frustrating that is. Uh, other things that affect your premium, when we get into things, let's now go to property insurance. Uh, what is the square footage of your buildings? What is the construction type of your buildings? Are they metal warehouses? Are they concrete block? Are they wood frame? Uh, what kind of roof do you have? All of those variables go into creating an insurance premium when underwriters are looking at a risk or looking at your business as an electrical contracting firm. So one of the most important things to realize is you really can't say, hey, my buddy who is across town is also an electrician. Here's his insurance cost. Why is mine not like that? Or why is he so expensive and I'm not? Am I missing something? Or why is you know he so cheap and why am I so expensive? Well, you may have 10 trucks and he may have four trucks. You may have a $3 million payroll and he may have a $700,000 payroll. Or he may have a wood frame building that was built in 1935 that has a ton of character but probably won't hold up to windstorm and, and other perils, particularly uh, here in the southeastern United States. And you may have a concrete warehouse that was built last year and is made to withstand weather and, and other forces. So you have to know that there are a ton of variables that go in, including loss history. If you have a lot of claims in the past, they show up on what are called your loss runs or your loss history. That then is a factor when an underwriter is looking into an account and coming up with pricing. That's right, in the commercial realm, unlike the personal lines realm, there is an ability to apply credits or debits to a rate. That does not mean that an insurance company can just make up its rates. There is still regulation, but on the admitted side of the house, rates still must be filed and approved by the state. And then there are a finite amount of credits and debits that can be applied depending upon how appetizing a risk your firm looks to an underwriter. On the excess and surplus line side, there's a little more leeway, but there's still strict regulation. So know that and understand that the better your business performs in terms of creating or not creating insurance claims, that will have an effect on your premium. The same is true in workers' comp. There's a concept called a experience modification factor. If that mod, as we call it in the business, is 1.0, that means you are on par on average and your rate is exactly as the stated rates in your state are. However, if your mod goes below 1.0, let's say it's 0.85, that means you're doing 15% better because that's 15% less than, than 1.0 or 100. You're doing 15% better than other firms like yours on average in the state. 
that means your premium will probably go down, although mods typically don't uh, trigger discounts until they reach a certain premium level, but it's not that high. As well, if your mod goes over 1.0, let's say it's 1.2, that means you're doing 20% worse or your firm has 20% more losses than average. Therefore, higher premium. That's 0.85, therefore lower work comp premium. So hopefully that helps explain a little bit about how premiums work. The biggest thing to remember is to run a clean operation and put safety first, not only for your personnel, but also for your quality of work. The fewer losses you have, the less risk an insurance company will assume they're taking when they write your policy. The less risk they assume they're taking, the better the premium. The more risk they assume they're taking, the higher the premium. It really makes sense if you think about it. Insuring your electrical contracting firm is really not that daunting of a task. If you work with an independent insurance agent like Harry Levine Insurance, that is. Remember, there are a ton of moving pieces when it comes to designing your insurance package. There are even more moving pieces when it comes to figuring out what's your premium gonna look like. The advice of an independent agent is exactly what will help guide you through the process and make sure that you can run the most top quality operation and have the most favorable insurance costs and program for your needs. Give us a call today, email us, or make a submission on our website. We're excited to talk to you and help guide you through the process of designing your own very best insurance program for your electrical contracting firm.